This is a brand audit template that I have created for advertising agency owners and staff. And this will allow you to create an audit on the fly fairly quickly in about a couple of hours. So there's over 40 slides here, and this is actually version 2.0. I've done another video on a previous version, but I've added more data, more updates. So I thought I'd create another video here. And if you want to get the template, it's free. It's in the description for this YouTube video. So you can just go to the description. The link is there, no sign in required. I'm literally just giving you the PowerPoint file and you can pull that and there are notes in the slides, so it'll help you with pulling the data that I'm talking about here. If you'd like to listen to the commentary, let's go through it. So this is the cover page of the brand audit, and this is going to help you, this entire audit's gonna help you land a client, maybe it'll help you with a prospect meeting. So there's a number of ways you can use this audit and it's really helpful for uncovering revenue opportunities, maybe new marketing campaigns. It's just excellent data to have and everything can be customized. So this is the cover page. I would swap out the Nike logo. So Nike is going to be the brand here. This is going to be great for Fortune 500 companies or any kind of business that you wanna pull data for. This is the Nike logo. You can swap it out, swap it out for whichever client you're working with. You can change my name to your agency's name. So you can customize the, the black coloring, change it to coloring that's related to your brand. And let's get into it. This is the details page. And this is where we kind of talk about the five C's which is consumers, content, community, competition, conversions. And these are questions that we're going to be answering throughout the slides that we're pulling. Who is buying your products and services? What is working on social and what needs optimization? Who is engaging with you? And what are they feeling? Who is competing online in your space? What brings you business success. So these are questions that as an owner, or staff member of the advertising agency, these are questions you're going to answer in these slides. Consumers. So this is the first C that we're going to cover. Brand perceptions. How do consumers feel about your overall brand? Let's have a look. And then this is a slide that goes into the popularity of Nike. Okay interesting data. Again, you can pull this data easily in the show notes. So it'll be in the template in the description. You just download the PowerPoint and then it'll have a link to this so you can pull this. Then you have demographics. Again, more data. Which demographic segments should you be targeting? Do you see any surprises? This is incredible professional data that you can easily pull. And again, nothing requires a login. You can pull everything just by typing in like the brand name or even the brand's website that you're auditing. So nothing requires this expensive monthly fee. So if you're a new agency owner, this is going to be helpful. Even if you're an established agency owner, this is going to be tremendous data and maybe something you can add to your audit, right? Then you have consumer interests. Are your products and services aligned with the interests of your consumers? And then, you know, we're looking at hiking as the top fitness activity for people who like Nike. Oh, that's an interesting segment. Maybe you can create a campaign around hiking. Nike has maybe an opportunity there. And some of this data is kind of surprising. I would think that running should be higher, but again, Maybe this is an opportunity that's untapped, so something to consider. Popularity. This is like a Google Trends graph, so you can get this from Google Trends. It's consumer interest around the brand in the past 12 months. What content can be created to spark conversations? The graph is kind of flat, so maybe there's an opportunity to 
get some sort of a boost. And then maybe look at what was happening just prior to December 2017. There's a bit of a spike there. So what happened? Something to look at. Again, you might be talking to a marketing team and they can pull the data. So you'd, you'd be having a conversation, right? And then if you are auditing your own brand, so maybe you're not an agency owner, but you're just the entrepreneur, you're the CEO, and you're doing the audit of your own brand, then again, this still kind of applies to you. You can pull the data and do the research. So here's consumer search. These are the most searched topics and queries related to the brand. Again, Nike footwear, I'm not surprised that that's up there. Nike Air, not surprised that that is right up there. Those are pretty huge segments for Nike. I'm just going to go back here. So you can actually look at the ones that are number four, number five, and maybe look at, oh, maybe there's some opportunities here. Or even like Nike factory store. Oh, wow. There's a bit of a bit of activity there. Maybe something to talk about in a meeting. Maybe there's a, a campaign that you could do around Nike factory stores. Okay. Because Again, you're looking at opportunities for revenue growth. You're looking at opportunities for new marketing campaigns. This is what this data will give you. Next, we have product alignment. How cohesively your product offering aligns with consumers. And again, these are just comments that consumers are leaving through social media. So this is stuff that I physically go in and pull. I go onto the social media accounts of Nike and I pull what people are saying, right? Oh, I always buy women's Nike Air. That's what Laurel says. Interesting. Uh, then you've got, you know, some, some negative comments here. Nike is a horrible company. You know, you want to maybe look into is there a common trend? Are we seeing a lot of comments like that? So again, something to analyze. You want to look at what people are saying and that's going to help you because is your product offering what consumers want, right? They have a certain level of expectations you want to deliver. Next is content. If we're looking at video, and video investment is a priority as it should be 2020 and beyond. It might be useful to think like a broadcaster in terms of creating series content, right? And scheduling consistently to generate recurring views. Now, Nike has several viral videos using athletes. Nike is known as celebrity endorsement uh, for marketing, you know? that That's the brand that really uses celebrity endorsement. So you have all these celebrities and they've generated views. What does that indicate? Well, maybe continue on with celebrity endorsement. Look at up and coming athletes and endorse them and create videos around them, create viral campaigns around them. Written and images. What are your themes across written and image content? So I'm looking at YouTube here, Instagram, and I'm just looking to analyze on the blogs. I'm looking to see what kind of content Nike's creating here so I can get an idea of any consistency, any sort of themes. And I'm going to put this all in this slide, just like a, a screen capture, and we're seeing celebrity endorsements. But what I want to look at is an opportunity again through written and images to continue along a line that maybe works maybe something that is happening on video that could be somehow repurposed for written and images or vice versa you're just getting an idea of what they're doing on social next is content quality so this is just a little circular graph here. A mix of long form unique posts and reshares are critical to your content marketing strategy. Here's what we discovered with your recent efforts. Again, you've got a big portion of duplicate content, which you know I'm not really big on duplicate content. I believe in creating unique content for every 
sort of platform, but overall, I like the, the balance between these three. You've got common content, unique content, duplicate content. It's a fairly good balance considering how enormous the Nike brand is. Then you have content questions. I love this slide. Your consumer is asking these questions and more. And okay, these are amazing questions that you can repurpose for future content ideas. Okay, are Nike, is Nike ethical? Are Nike trainers big fitting? I mean, some of this, again, it's not going to be perfect, right? Well, but you're, you're just, you're pulling all this data to give sheer information to work with, right? Uh, this abundance of information, you can kind of pare down and say, hey, here are the different content pieces that we can create. Can Nike sneakers be washed? Hmm, that could be an interesting content piece around throwing the Nike shoes in the in the dryer. And it's like, is that allowed? Interesting. You know, you can you can get a lot of information from this. So the link for this slide, I think it's called Answer the Public. I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. It's a wonderful site and gives you plenty of data for this. It's all free. Advantage. What makes your content stand out from the crowd? Advantage is really important. It's like your unique selling proposition. Honestly, when I think of Nike, I'm thinking of big athletes and victory and winning, and that's really what it's all about. And no other brand do I associate with top-end athletes like, like I do with Nike. So have you ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world? Now is your chance. And it's like this this epic athlete persona that they're pushing. And I love it. I love what Nike's doing there. They've really owned this area. And I would suggest continuing with it. It's what makes them stand out from all the other brands in the athlete world, in the fitness athlete world. Boost. Where can you gain more visibility for your content? Okay. Podcast and series content with top athletes would be more popular. Yeah, I mean, podcasting is a big trend, especially, you know, the last five years. It's just really growing, and it's we're seeing continued growth. A form of audio content would be really helpful. And if you publish on YouTube, are you going to get the same boost as you used to? No. So you need to start looking at these other platforms audio being a big one, and capitalize with athletes. Maybe taking your YouTube videos, repurposing it for audio could be really helpful. That's just another example. You want to look at boosts, areas where you can jump in as an advertiser to really assist the brand. And now we're going to look at community. Reviews. How do you feel about this community response to your brand? So you're going to look at some good reviews and you're going to look at some bad reviews and say, hmm, is this really what you want? 499 reviews, a 3.9 out of 10. That might be an opportunity to go in, look at these reviews and maybe respond to them. Maybe answer them. Maybe figure out what's going on here. It's a little bit concerning. Glassdoor reviews would be related to your internal process. So your employees are leaving these reviews. 3.9 out of 5 based on over 3,500 reviews. That's actually pretty high for a big corporation. I don't mind that review rating. So internally, it seems like staff are raving about Nike. Nothing wrong there. But you want to look at those customer service reviews and really look at those as opportunities to improve your brand image. Next is engagement on Facebook. Above 1% engagement rate is good. Okay, so that's what you really want to kind of aim for. And you're sitting at 1%. That's pretty good. And you got over 31 million page likes. So that's an incredible number. And you have plenty of people talking about this. I think as far as Facebook, it seems like you're doing pretty well here. And maybe you want to look at what's going on with your Facebook account and saying, hey, 
what's working here that we can use on other social media platforms? And is what we're doing on Facebook going to work on those other platforms? Something to look at. And this is the Instagram engagement rate calculator. An engagement rate between 0 and 1.64% is considered to be low. Interesting, Nike is 0.66%. So it's a bit low. We want to get above 1.64%. And you know, Instagram is a little tricky because engagement these days isn't as good as it used to be. So a company with a low rate on Instagram could expect between 0 to 16.4 reactions for every 1,000 followers. So engagement, rate, engagement rates between 1.64 and 3.48 are considered to be good. You know, we should be aiming for like 3%. This is where you could go in, analyze their social media, and say, hey, this is what you need to do for your Instagram. This is how you're going to get more engagement. Why? Because look at the percentage that Adidas is doing, or look at the percentage that somebody is doing really well. Like you could, you could duplicate this slide and then bring up a competitor such as Adidas or Under Armour and say, look at their engagement rates and look at what content they're doing. Right? You can always just expand this audit. If you want to get really competitor analytical, then you could do that. So that's engagement rate. Top influencers. What are you doing to maintain relationships with your top influencers? You've got Cristiano Ronaldo on the top, and you have Foot Locker. Uh, what's going on here? What are you giving them? What are you working towards in terms of a partnership here? Word clouds. Executives love word clouds. So again, these are word clouds. And again, you can pull this data from the notes in the slide, okay? And you can get this fairly easily. So you've got shoes this is the common one. No surprise there. And then you've got Adidas mentioned there. So there's a competitor thing right there. Maybe you want to look at what Adidas is doing and figure out how you can kind of take away their shine sentiments and this is a really interesting graph on feelings from the twitter community you got lots related to excitement and you have relaxed serene a lot of it seems fairly positive and away from the other side the left side's like tense depressed most of the dots are away from that so i think that's a good it's a good thing to mention social shares what are your expectations for share count Right now, you've got over 403,000 total shares. The majority is basically all of them from Facebook. So, again, something to look at. Maybe you could do something with Pinterest and Reddit and LinkedIn, you know? Competition. Industry ranking. Here's how you rank online for your industry. Any surprises? you got... Some of these companies here, they're not really directly related to Nike, but they're still clothing brands, right? Somebody's shopping, and instead of buying fitness apparel, they might be going to H&M or Macy's to get clothing. So now Nike could probably be in Macy's, but what you might want to look at is how can you appeal to maybe more of these fashion-type brands without diluting what you're doing you don't want to affect where you're going as a brand but maybe look at what h&m is doing because they're number one right here and their bounce rate is incredible so people are staying on their website interesting visit duration they're staying on there longer nike's only four minutes hmm. something to op something to kind of improve on is how can you get people staying on nike longer to continue to shop and buy more Competitor search. Here are your competitors based on organic and paid search. Any surprises? So on organic, you got like Foot Locker, Adidas, Under Armour. No surprise, I would say. Then you've got, you know, on the right, you know, these wholesale companies are using paid advertising to get ahead. So maybe you'd want to look at what you can do 
to kind of fight them off. Keyword competition. This is the overlap for shared, which is shared organic on the left, and then paid right to keywords. For keyword competition. This is the overlap for shared organic on the left and then paid on the right keywords. So again, it's just basically a summary of the previous slide. You've got like the top three on each side, sort of how things compare. So you seem to be more dominant on the organic for the left and then for paid. You got finishline.com there. It's kind of overtaking Nike. So interesting to look at. Competitor social. Interesting things your, comp your competition is doing on social media. So again, we're looking at Adidas, Under Armour, and what's going on here? What are they creating? Uh, what kind of content could you... Not so much copy, but get inspired from. I believe you inspire your brand through others. So have a look. Conversions. This is the SEO overview. Several key stats for your site. What stands out to you? You've got organic keywords. You've got you know inbound clicks from Google. Nike we're seeing here is really dominating organic, which is great. But maybe you could look at the paid end of it, PBC. You know, maybe there's an opportunity there to kind of grow. Because as we mentioned before, you got that first lane there. It's kind of overtaking things. So something to look at. Then you have email reputation. The quality of your domain reputation affects email spam and deliverability. So everything seems fairly normal, pretty decent email volume. And you can kind of explain this a little bit better by going into the link in the show in this slide notes here, and you can kind of look into it and understand what these terms mean. But essentially you're looking at kind of a Richter scale of email volume it's like based on like one to 10. And it's based on like world share so there's a number of different factors here. So you're kind of sitting, but then, you know, you've got a little bit of a volume change, so you might want to look into that. Overall, there's no red flags here, which is good for spam and deliverability. Next is email volume. Again, it's looking at that kind of Richter scale. So we've got this consistent graph here. It's a percentage of the world's total email sends. Nothing that looks like an earthquake to me, which is good. Page speed. Page speed equals revenue. It's a critical factor. Most websites lose half their visitors during page load alone. So what do you think about this website speed? You know, it's an 81 out of 100. It's based on mobile here. Is that, is that good enough? I mean... I would say it's decent as opportunities for growth, whether it's, well, let's look at the checklist here. Here's your speed checklist to improve things. Leverage browser caching, minimize redirects, optimize images. I think optimizing images is a huge one. Simple, easy to fix. Reduce server time. Talk to your host server, fix the server time. Minify your codes, put CSS at the top and JS at the bottom. Reduce DNS lookups. So a lot of this is just technical terminology that you would have a developer take care of. Site stats. This is where you're looking at the connection of social media to the website, to the Nike website. You know, I notice here, you know, the Facebook page isn't properly linked through Nike. Twitter page isn't properly linked. Printability, if somebody wanted to print a Nike page, and which actually could be very common for e-commerce, you could have a, maybe an elderly person that wants to print a page to review. So no printability. So you can actually adjust that with a line of code. No analytics set up, and then meta tags. So there's a few opportunities here to improve the connectedness. This all has an effect on your ranking. Amount of content, 
5.4 again this can be boosted through maybe long form blog posts a lot of this just analyzes like five pages of the nike site and then it says okay of these five pages how is everything looking so while it might not find good amounts of content on your five pages it could find them in pages that are a little bit more hidden so some of this you kind of have to take with a grain of salt but in the link in the slide notes there's more data like there's more detail that you can do you can look into before you do it like the presentation so you can figure out what all this kind of means and then really self-educate yourself and then communicate hey here are the different things that are really affected i'm I'm telling you this, but it might just, some of this, there's a lot that I'm describing here, right? There's plenty of slides, or nearly 50 slides. So I can't go over everything, but it would be good that you educate yourself so that you understand, oh, hey, it's a zero on Facebook page. What does that mean? Well, it means that the linking could be better. And that gives you an opportunity to maybe go in and fix that for them. Keyword research. Here are our suggestions for keywords related to the brand. Got Nike shoes there, then you got Adidas up there too. So how, what does this mean? Well, it could have an effect on how you're creating your content down the road, long-term. What can you capitalize on around these terms? You got all black Nike shoes. Hmm, maybe something to look at for a next campaign. Positioning. Are these top market suggestions aligned with your internal brand positioning? What would you add or remove with this list? You've got sports and fitness apparel, wholesalers, liquidators, running and walking, running shoes. I mean, that all seems fairly aligned with what Nike's all about. Do you see anything that's maybe a red flag? I mean, wholesalers and liquidators, that's interesting. That kind of goes back to that factory store keyword that we saw before. Opportunity size. So now we're looking at countries and we're looking at opportunities. Oh, France is right there. So how are you doing with France? It seems like everything's going well there. Right up there with the United States. I'm surprised France is number two. You think Canada would be next, but I'm kind of biased because I'm Canadian. So ease of doing business, you know, it's number eight. So it's looking at all these different product categories from the previous slide and saying, how you kind of rank. Certainly there's an opportunity with France, there's an opportunity with many countries here. Backlink overview. Success of your website on search engines is influenced by backlinking. How do you feel about these numbers? Now, I think these numbers are actually quite high and this is due to the fact that you're doing so well in organic search that you have all of these backlinks. It's being created over time. Traffic sources. You know, no surprise. Search is the number one and direct there. You got social, mail, referrals. So maybe there's some opportunities here to boost up social, to boost up referrals. Those are the next two in line. And you have pricing. Look at how pricing options may affect conversions. 2014, Nike initiated a new pricing strategy. The company determined from market analysis that its customers appreciated the value that the brand provided, which meant that it could charge a higher price for its products. Nike began to raise its prices 4 to 5% a year. Okay, so this is kind of interesting in looking at pricing and is that maybe affecting how many customers are buying? Maybe it's affecting how much time is spent on your website. What are people saying about the prices? Distribution. Again, where more purchasing can happen. I look at Amazon here and I see some opportunities, lots of reviews on Amazon. Hey, maybe keep going with having a Nike store, a Nike option through Amazon. Just that additional reach that you can capitalize on. Being that Amazon's the monster in this game, why not? Analytics, last month. It's kind of, again, looking at your average visit duration, pages per visit, bounce rate. So some of this data might be redundant. 
that's okay because you can go back and say, oh, look, you know, we've been talking about the visit duration. You kind of look at all of this. Total visits is pretty high. You can kind of go into this. Or you can also delete some of these slides, right? Everything's customizable. You don't need to have everything. I'm giving you as much as I can so that you can give the best presentation possible. Partners. Ooh, opportunities. Now, Converse is part of Nike. Hurley, I believe, is part of Nike as well. But you've also got PayPal here, Facebook. A lot of these are just connected to Nike through the e-commerce. The Nike Talio, I believe that's like an HR kind of setup. So that means people are looking at careers on Nike and they're going through there. And then you have Facebook. These are just websites that are kind of interconnected with Nike. This is the final discussion, like a Q&A where you can have the discussion with the client. What questions do you have around this data? How do you feel about the brand overall? What is the biggest surprise to you? Campaign ideas that came to mind with this data. What is one action item you would like to make by next week? You want to get an action item set up, whether it's maybe experimenting with a new campaign. You don't want to leave something on the table. You want to schedule something for next week. Get the ball rolling. Don't let this audit just sit in a dusty folder. You want to look at the data and say, hey, here's how we can present X, Y, and Z. But you want to let them talk as well. Get their thoughts. Get them to talk. You've just done all the talking. Get them to talk now. Figure out what's on their mind now. What's interesting? And you know what? Maybe let them discuss with you along the way as you're presenting. Get them to jump in, to chime in along the way. And see their expressions. And that's it. And final slide, customize it as you wish. I hope this helps. This has taken me many, many years, actually, of refinement. And I've worked with a number of Fortune 500 brands to put things like this together. So I've done a number of these types of audits. There's no right or wrong way to actually do an audit. What I've noticed with advertising agencies is everyone has a custom way of doing it. So that means you're basically putting this data together and giving it an amazing presentation filled with data that is actionable, right? That's essentially what you're doing, okay? So hopefully this helps and best of luck on your advertising and your marketing journey. Cheers.